All right, good morning art students. So hopefully you guys have been okay with the found object color wheel. I see some of you have not looked at the assignment or the rubric. It's important to make sure you actually look over those things. When I post an assignment, make sure to look at the instructions and at the rubric. A lot of you are trying the work and submitting photos to me, which is great. However, some of you are submitting photos without actually reading what the requirements of the assignment are. And I just wanna make sure you read the requirements for the assignment and check the rubric that's attached to the assignment so that you know how you can earn full points. Um, for the color wheel, you were supposed to have chosen 20 objects, not 10, not eight, not 15, 20. If you want full points, you need to find 20 objects that have different colors in the color wheel. So don't just show me random objects. You're trying to find objects that match the color wheel and you're trying to arrange them in a way that matches the color wheel. If you do that, you get the full 50 points. It's a nice, easy grade. So please make sure you're being creative about where you find these objects. Obviously ask for permission first, but you can look at the cover of a book. A notebook might be a certain color. Um, you might find a condiment in your refrigerator as a color like ketchup, right? It's red, you find some red, you find some yellow. Um, a bag for tea might be a certain color. So look through different areas of your house, try to be creative. I wanna make sure you get full points. So please make sure you look at the instructions, be creative and try to meet the requirements. I know this is new for everybody. So um, if you have trouble uploading anything, please let me know. Or if you're having issues trying to figure something out, reach out to me, I'm available um, via Google Classroom or via uh, email. So please let me know. So what we're gonna be doing today is something I've actually wanted to teach you guys for a while. It's a little bit tricky. It's called linear perspective or one point perspective. And it's something that helps you create depth. And remember depth is the illusion of taking up space. So eighth graders, you already did a really good job creating depth using overlapping. Um, seventh graders, you did this too with your composition projects and with scale, making things big and small. But linear perspective is basically something where you learn how to make something look big or small based on placement and based on the angle it goes back in space. So I'm gonna give a demo of how to do this, but this is something that you guys probably have seen before. Um, it looks oftentimes like a road going back in space and getting smaller as it goes away in, um, in the distance. It's something that you guys will, once you get it, it's gonna be something that's gonna be great to include in any drawings that you do in the future. So we're gonna start off simple by drawing boxes and trying to make them look like they're going back in space. It's just one simple method of how to do it. It takes some practice. Um, all the tools that you're going to need are a pencil, a piece of paper, and a straight um, edge. So it could be a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, you can use the edge of a notebook, the edge of a box. It doesn't matter as long as you can make a straight line. So I'm gonna give you a demo on how to do this. The expectation for this project is that you have at least five boxes, you can do more, um, of different sizes that look like they're going back in space. So I'm going to create a demonstration of that so you can see what I expect. And if you want to, you can add color, you're not required to. If you wanna add color, you can. Um, but for now, we're just going to be practicing using linear perspective to make these boxes go back in space. Make sure you watch the tutorial video and fill out the Google form so I can take attendance for your participation. Please make sure you submit the Google form. Um, when you finish the Google form, hit that you have completed and submit the assignment on Google Classroom. Right now I have some kids who are submitting the Google form without saying they completed the assignment or some people saying they completed the assignment without submitting the Google form. It's important that you do both so I can get an accurate count for who's actually participating. All right, we got a little cut off there, um, tech issues, that's all right. But if you have questions about how to do this method, please, please reach out to me via email. Um, this is a little bit of a confusing process, so watch the tutorial video. There are tons of tutorial videos on YouTube as well, so if you, if you wanna try something on your own and Google search um, one point perspective or linear perspective tutorial, that should help you guys if you want more than the tutorial I'm giving you. Okay, so this is going to be our setup for doing linear perspective. Uh, make sure you have a piece of paper, pencil, straight edge of any sort. Ruler is fine. If you want to use a notebook, that's fine too. Anything that helps you draw a straight line. So basically there's a system to making sure things are going to be going back in space and making it look realistic. The first thing that we need to do is draw a straight horizontal line. So that means you're making it side to side, not up and down. 
across our paper. Okay, you want it to be parallel to the edge of your paper, to the bottom edge of your paper, right? This is called the horizon line. The horizon line is anywhere where the sky or meets the land or the ocean. So it's just a straight line across the edge of your paper. If you've ever been to the beach and you've looked out, like if you've gone down to Coney Island and you look out at the ocean, it's where the sky and the water meet. Or if you're, you know, in the middle of nowhere in the desert, it's all the way in the distance where you, it looks like kind of space just continues to go on. So what we're going to do from here is draw one dot on our horizon line. One little dot. This dot is called the vanishing point. This is our vocab, so make sure you're paying attention. All right, so we have vanishing point and we have the horizon line. Okay, so these two things are gonna be key in helping you make things look like they are going back in space. The vanishing point is that one point on the horizon that everything moves back towards, okay? So if I am going to be creating something in linear perspective, I am making everything that I'm drawing all of these lines that go back in space will be heading towards this dot, okay? So what I'm gonna start with, I'm just going to create a couple of boxes. Try to make some big and some small. Um, you can make them parallel to the edge of the paper. You can make them um, kind of at different angles. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what you're going to try to do is create these boxes in all over the paper. They can be below your horizon line. They can be floating above your horizon line. It doesn't really matter. So for the sake of time, I'm going to draw these out. I'm going to sketch them out. Make sure your corners are easy to see. You want to make sure your corners are easy to see because that is going to be where you create your lines from towards your vanishing point. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to add another box down here. This is going to get a little complicated. Okay, so I have my five boxes. You are at minimum required to have five boxes for this project. You can do more if you want. You can add color if you want, doesn't matter. Um, but for now, the only thing I'm assessing you on is how you make these boxes look like they go back in space. So this system of linear perspective was actually developed during the Renaissance uh, time period. So it was really interesting because before this, there was no real method for having realistic looking drawings. Um, you created kind of depth by doing overlapping, which you guys know about already, putting one object on top of the other. Um, but before this, there wasn't really any system of making things look more realistic. So what we're going to look at right now is how do we make these boxes look like they're extending back in space. So what you're going to do is identify where the corners of your boxes are. The back corner here, the farthest corner away from your vanishing point, you don't need to worry about because we are not making our boxes see through. We are making them so we cannot see through them. So I'm going to pick out all of my corners and then I will show you how we make these boxes look like they go back in space. All right, so the key to making these things go back in space is connecting the corners to our vanishing point. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with the corner of my box. I'm going to make sure it's touching the corner of my box and the vanishing point. So I need to slide my ruler over and connect the corner of my box to the vanishing point. All right, so this doesn't look like much yet, but once I connect the other corners of the box, so I'm gonna to connect to the top corner to the vanishing point and draw a line. Make sure the line is straight. You're gonna notice that all the lines coming from this box will eventually look and converge. They come together at this vanishing point here, okay? So I'm not going to do the back corner here, this farthest back corner, because if I do that, my box is now see-through. So it kind of, it looks transparent. If you wanna do that, you can, but you can also erase it, that backmost corner. So you will have three corners at most touching the vanishing point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my next box. I'm gonna start over here. I'm moving around from the closest boxes to the boxes that are farthest away from the vanishing point. So I connect my ruler or my straight edge to my corner. I slide it up so it connects to the vanishing point. When I connect it, it's going to be looking as though it goes back in space towards that vanishing point from the corner to the vanishing point. This one's a little tricky because it's gonna get pretty squished, but I'm gonna click 
uh, this back corner here, I'm going to connect my pencil. I'm going to connect it to my vanishing point. And you can see there's barely any space, but that kind of makes it look like it's going back in space too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this next box. So connect my corner, line up my straight edge, connect it to my vanishing point, connect the dots. All right. I'm going to go to my corner of my box, make sure it's connected to my vanishing point, draw a straight line. I have some connected lines that are all going back towards that vanishing point. Okay, so now I have three boxes that are currently going back in space. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one right here. Connect the dots, connect the dots, and connect the dots. Again, this is just on the corner of the box. It's not on the edge of the box, just the corners. All right, so I have four boxes that now look like they're coming out towards us. Um, the last thing I want to show you is what happens if we have overlapping boxes, okay? So this box out here is farther away from the vanishing point than this box right here. I still need to connect these dots to my vanishing point. A lot of kids have the tendency to want to go around and connect like this. That does not make sense. You are bending physics if you do that. Do not do that, okay? You are still going to line up your corner with the vanishing point. So I'm gonna line it up here, connect my straight edge, connect my straight edge or my ruler to my vanishing point. Basically what you're going to do is draw a line. You are going to continue that line to the vanishing point lightly. Anywhere that that line intersects another box, you erase. Okay, so I'm gonna do another corner here. I line it up here, I line it up with my vanishing point, I connect it all the way down, nice and light. Draw light till you got it right. You're going to erase. Anywhere it intersects another box, I'm going to erase. Okay, my last corner, I'm going to connect the dot. Connect the corner, connect it to the vanishing point. Keep it nice and light. And again, anywhere it intersects the other box or crosses over the other box, I'm going to erase. So I now have my five boxes. I'm going to make those outlines a little darker. I now have those five boxes with the corners connecting to the vanishing point. You can see it looks like it's coming towards you. You can get a little fancy if you want to. You can make different lines along the edge. Um, if you want to use your uh, straight edge here, you can actually make lines that are parallel to the edge of your box. That kind of looks kind of looks pretty cool if you do that all the way down. If you bring those lines closer together makes it look like it's going back in space more. If you want to get fancy, you can do that. Um, you're also welcome to add a little bit of color if you want to. So Marker's Trans Color Pencils. If you want to make it look like it is coming towards you in space, um, the colors that you are going to use on the front of the box are going to be the darkest. So I'll give you an example. We're going to do something like this. Okay, so the box would be the darkest object. So I'm going to color that in, in the darkest version of my color. Nice and neat. Okay. And then you can do some other colors, kind of fading. You can do some little lines. Those of you that are in the eighth grade, this is hatching, right? You guys remember how to do that with shading. So I make it darker by putting the lines closer together. And I can make it a little bit lighter with another lighter color, moving back in space. All right, this is how you can continue the illusion of making something look three-dimensional. You do not need to color it. You are not required to color it. Um, this is just an extra step if you want to. If you're having fun with it and you want to try it, feel free to do that. Um, it's up to you guys what you want to do, but basically the only requirements are that I have five boxes that accurately connect to the vanishing point. If you have any questions about what the vanishing point is or if you want to look up another tutorial on YouTube I can recommend a few um, but try to get this done so you can show me that you know how to create depth all right thank you so much submit the assignments to the correct folder by Friday